Hey, how are you doing over there? I hope you're doing fine. Now, there is this video that I have pulled out for you. And you need to watch this over and over again. And you'll come to thank me later. For I know we are remaining with very few days to the results. And some of you are waiting for their interviews. It's about the mistakes that people do, the petty, petty, petty mistakes that people do that end up costing them the visas. So please, if you want to have a successful visa process, the diversity visa process, watch this video over and over again so that you will not fall in the same pit as the others. I know there is a very important video that I am working on at this time and it will come just about two days before the results and that video will be big, you'll tell me, and it will help you a lot after the selection. So watch this video together with me and get the points in there. So what do we have in store for you in today's video? As you can tell, uh, we'll be discussing on the common mistakes that DV selectees commit when filling their DS-260 forms. And these mistakes should be avoided at all costs. And we shall see the reason as to why majority of the DV selectees end up committing these mistakes. First of all, the DS-260 form, as I have explained again and again, is a very important form for a DV selectee. This is the form that you are filling in application for the green card itself. So in other words, we can say you are filling the form to apply for the green card. And that's why it's called the immigrant visa form. Having known that, it is very important and very crucial for you to provide all information well filled and correctly filled on the DS-260 form. And that's why in this video, I want to go through several errors or mistakes that individuals do and should be avoided at all costs. The first mistake that is common is lack of attention to details. I have them listed here and I'll be looking down to refer to them time and again. Lack of attention to details. Most of the DV winners, they are caught unawares. Maybe they were not expecting to win or they are over anxious. And therefore, when they get selected, they want to do this in a hurry simply because they heard that the second step after winning the DV lottery is to fill the DS-260 form. So they will try to now get down to fill this DS-260 form having not prepared well. Once you realize you've been selected, you need to settle down. Don't be overjoyed and affect your D as to 60 filling process. So come down, gather all information that you are required, settle down, and then fill. And then you'll avoid this lack of attention to detail mistake. You'll find people mistyping their names, that is doing typos. And these typos, they raise questions to the consular officer during the interview, if you erred in writing your name or the date of birth or whichever minor errors that you commit, then this can cost you. So you just need to settle down and fill everything to details. 
don't lose your attention when filling the DS-260 form. The second common mistake that people do commit time and again is providing incomplete personal information. And I mean your personal information as the principal applicant together with the personal information of your derivatives. They need to be captured in their entirety. Full details regarding your derivatives and your details as well. Don't omit anything that is your biological data. Don't omit anything that explains who you are. So the details in the birth certificate must be captured well. The details on the marriage certificate must be captured well. The details about your travel, about your history, about everything that is needed have to be captured properly for everyone in your application. In this also, stop using abbreviations. Use full names. Abbreviation of your place of birth, abbreviation of your names or whichever thing, avoid those abbreviations. Another mistake and this one I've been asked time and again is regarding conflicting information. This is a major issue with majority of the DV selectees and I've received a lot of questions and I've helped a lot of people out of this mistake. So before you even fill your DS-260 form, ensure you understand this. By conflicting information, I mean that you provide different information on the same thing. Every time you're filling the DS-260 form, ensure that the birth certificate marries the details in the marriage certificate. They also marry the details in the academic documents and so on and so forth. What do I mean? For example, your names, they must conform in all of the documents that you have. They must be the same. Your date of birth must remain constant throughout the documents and every other details. So nonconformity in the information that you provide, it raises questions and this can lead to your visa denial. And people have asked me that on my passport document, the name differs slightly with what appears on the birth certificate and also what appears on my academic documents. What do I do about this? And I usually tell them if it is possible to do another document to rectify the names, do so. But if it is not possible at all, then you need to get a second document. We call it the affidavit. So you need to get an affidavit to prove that all that information that does not rhyme, that do not look alike, that do not conform, they mean the same thing. So when filling the DS-260 form, avoid nonconformity. That is conflicting information. Also, the application, when you are entering the lottery, those details that you filled regarding yourself and your derivatives, they must conform without your filling in your DS-260 form. The dates of birth, they must be the same. The names must be the same. All the biological data must be the same. Avoid conflicting information. The next common mistake that people normally do is neglecting or failure to include all the members or some of the members of your family. If you're applying as a family or as a single person and you have kids, ensure that you put all of your members, both in your application and also on the DS-260 form, 
And you can bear me witness that we have several DV selectees that when they were entering the DV lottery, they omitted some of their members. A good example is a woman married to a man and the man comes in to the relationship with kids. And therefore, when this woman plays the lotto, does not include the stepchildren that came with this husband. And therefore, that is a major mistake because you are supposed to include the stepchildren. Some single lady as well as some single men, they have kids, but when feeling, they decide to feel as single deceiving themselves that owing to the fact that they don't want to move with them to the U.S., they are not supposed to include them. Who told you that? Even if you are not immigrating with your children or with your spouse or with the derivatives, you have to include them, both in the application and during filling the DS-260 form. So by you omitting the family member's on the DS-260 form, you are making a major, a major mistake. And you cannot go through the interview with the omission of some of your derivatives. So avoid those mistakes. The other common mistake that people commit during filling the DS-260 form is providing inaccurate or incomplete education or work history or both of them and I normally tell you the details that you fill on the DS-260 form on work history let me begin with the work history you should provide all the details regarding your past work history and when you're going to the interview for all the work that you can get the documents, the proof document, the supporting document, get them. But what you're supposed to do is all the work history provide it there. If you meet one and by any chance the consul of the embassy come to realize that, then you're going to risk. I don't see the reason as to why you should omit any job in your work history. When you come to education, the education that you list or you fill in the application and on the DS-260 form must have supporting documents. Any academic achievement that you have a supporting document, you have to fill it on the DS-260 form. But if you cannot provide the supporting document to your academic background, then that you don't list. If you can provide transcripts, if you can provide certificate, any supporting document to back up what you stated about your education, then you fill that information without omitting none. So that is the other mistake that people do and I've received a lot of questions regarding that. The next mistake that is common is failure to provide supporting documents. And this is in connection with the DS-260 form. During filling the DS-260 form, you are not required to have the documents. But during the interview, you have to provide the supporting documents and they must support what is on the DS-264. And that's why I've told you on the academic background. If you cannot provide supporting documents to those details, then you don't include only those that you can support by documentation. And then the other mistake that people do when filling the DS-260 form is failure to provide the previous visa denials 
or immigration violations. Now, face me right, because this is very important. Your visa history must be well captured and especially your visa history to the United States. At one point or another, you might have tried a visa, maybe a visit visa or a student visa to the US. And due to one reason or the other, you are not successful and you are denied. That information the United States Embassy has and you have to include them. If you omit your previous visa history, be sure you not get your visa approved. If you don't include them on your DS-260 form, you will not get your visa approved. If you've ever violated the immigration laws, maybe you once overstayed your visa in the United States, or you were once deported because of one reason or the other. Anything regarding violation of the immigration laws, they have the history. Don't omit. Include them. That is the other mistake that people commit. I've dwelt on that so that you can understand that you're not supposed to leave out your immigration history from the DS-260 form. And then finally, the last mistake and not the least that I want to do, and it is common, is not reviewing your DS-260 form before clicking that button, submit. So before you can confidently and comfortably submit your DS-260 form, before you can click on that submit button, you are supposed to review all the information that you have imputed. And this is to ensure that there are no errors in typing that you have made. There are no dates that you have put wrongly. This is to ensure there are is no information, even a single one, that you've not included that is supposed to be included. This is to ensure that you have done the entire DS-260 as required and filled them correctly. Go through the DS-260 form that you have just completed over again and verify that whatever you filled is correct. So before submitting, please check. This is the other mistake that people do. They don't double check to see whether they have filled it correctly. So those are some of the mistakes that you might commit when filling the DS-260 form and you need to avoid them. You need to avoid them at all cost. Thank you guys for watching this video. I really do appreciate your subscription please don't forget to subscribe if you are new to this channel and also support us like the video and let's meet in the next video keep safe